Hi everyone, it's Kim. And since we aren't having a lecture discussion this week, combined with the fact that the lecture videos became blurry on YouTube, I'm going to go through the genetics problems on the study guide. Now, I really encourage you to work these problems on your own first because the problems on the exam are similar but not identical to these. These do cover each major pattern of inheritance, but it's really important that you be able to work these on your own because the problems on the exam will be slightly different. So we're starting with complete dominance, which is the most common pattern of inheritance. And remember for each of these, we're really looking at the heterozygous individual as our indicator of what pattern of inheritance this is. So I'm going to start with this first problem. If purple fur is completely dominant over yellow and two heterozygous individuals are crossed, what will the genotype and phenotype percentages be for the offspring? Okay, so heterozygous and P is our allele. So we're meaning big P, little p times big P, little p. So that will be our cross. I didn't really leave enough room there, did I? Big P, little p times big P, little p. I should have made this loopy so it looks like a little p. So our results are 25% homozygous dominant, 50% heterozygous, and 25% homozygous recessive. And if purple is completely dominant over yellow, these would be purple. These would also be purple. And that's why this is complete dominance because in a heterozygous individual, they look like the dominant allele. And then these would be the only yellow individuals. That same pattern applies in the next problem, but now we are talking about a disease. So we're going to express those heterozygous individuals as carriers. So when something's autosomal recessive, that means the disorder is carried on the recessive allele, not the dominant allele. This is albinism, so we're going to use the letter A. So that means albinism is carried on the little a allele. So that means big A is normal and little a is albinism because it's autosomal recessive. So autosomal tells us it's not X or Y. Okay, X or Y have nothing to do with this. Autosomal means it's on chromosomes one through 22 and it's carried on the recessive allele. So this is a female carrier and a normal male. So it does tell you the gender of the parent that has that trait but X and Y do not figure into this. So just because the problem says male or female doesn't mean you use X and Y. The only time you will do that is if it says it's X linked, such as in number four. That one says X linked, that, then you'll use X and Y. Okay, so carrier female is going to be big A, little a, and a normal male is going to be big A, big A. So let's do that cross. Big A, big A times big A, little a. You can put either parent on top or at the side, it doesn't matter. So this ends up being 50% homozygous dominant and 50% heterozygous, but in this case we call those individuals carriers. So 50%, this would be normal, meaning no disorder. The next question is different because now it's autosomal dominant 
mean it's meaning it's carried on the dominant allele, not the recessive allele. So autosomal again means chromosomes one through 22. So X and Y don't figure into this. Dominant is telling you that big D is dwarfism, not little d. Little d is normal. And here's the key to this one. You have to remember that the way this manifests is that big D, big D is lethal. And because it's on the dominant allele, that means heterozygous individuals have the disorder. There are no carriers. Having one big D allele is bad enough to have the disease. Two of them is so bad that it's lethal. So this is dwarfism. That's a big deal in these types of problems. You have to know the genotype of each possible situation so you can do the cross correctly. So in this case, little d, little d is normal. It's reversed if you look at the, the previous problem. So this is a dwarf female mates with a normal male. Now, typically what happens in this problem is I get emails from students saying, hey, professor, um, you didn't tell us if the dwarf female was homozygous or heterozygous. Okay, I'll tell you right now, if she is mating, then she is heterozygous, okay? Because the big D, big D was lethal, that baby never developed. So if someone is alive and they have the disorder, whether it's Huntington's disease, dwarfism, any of these autosomal dominant disorders, if they have the disorder, that means they are heterozygous. So dwarfism female is going to be this genotype times normal male. That's an important one too, because that looks different than normal in the previous question. Now let's do the square. Big D, little d. Little d, little d. Okay, the good thing about this cross, there are no lethal combinations here. We end up with 50% big D, little d. Again, this is not a carrier, this is dwarfism because you only have to have one of the bad allele to have the disorder. And then 50% little d, little d, which is normal. Okay, so the babies look like the parents basically. Now we have an X-linked disorder, now X and Y matter, and now there are more possible phenotypes and genotypes because of the X carrying the disorder rather than an autosome. Okay, so hemophiliac male, hemophiliac female. Wow, that's a bad combination. So remember our possible outcomes are two normal Xs, one X with the disorder. And remember, we typically show the bad allele as a superscript of that letter. This would be two bad alleles on the X. So these are all females. And then XY, and then a male with the hemophilia allele. So XX, this is going to be what we call normal female. This is going to be carrier female because she has one bad gene, but she still makes enough normal protein that she doesn't have hemophilia. So she's a carrier. The only way females can have hemophilia is if they have two bad alleles, no way to make a correct version of that protein. XY, this would be normal male. And XHY, he only has one bad allele, but he doesn't have another X. So he doesn't have an opportunity to make a normal version of that protein. That means he has hemophilia. There are no carrier males. So this would be hemophilia male. So we have hemophilia male times hemophilia female. Let's draw our square. So hemophilia male means on his X, he has the hemophilia gene. And then hemophilia female means both of her X's have the gene. So that means 
only one outcome for our females. All the female babies are going to have hemophilia. And remember, we're going to report male and female offspring separately in this question. And that is different from the prior questions as well. Okay, and all the males have hemophilia also. So all the offspring are going to have hemophilia in this cross. So we would say 100% of our females are XH, XH, and that's hemophilia. And 100% of our males are XHY, which is hemophilia. Remember that in these crosses, you divide this in half. So rather than each square being 25%, like it was in the previous, so 25, 25, 25, 25, now we're talking about just our female offspring on this side and just our male offspring on this side. So each square is now 50%. That's 50% of our females. This is 50% of our females. This is 50% of our males. This is the other 50% of our males. So that's the other way those crosses differ from the autosomal crosses. Okay, and then finally we have a blood type question. And since it's blood type, um, there is no X or Y and the alleles look a little different. We don't have um, just the typical A and B. And if you, if you write out A, B and O on these, remember you're not going to get the correct answer because you won't be able to tell which one is dominant and which one is recessive. Okay, so type AB mates with heterozygous type B. So a lot going on in this question. First, you have to remember what the alleles look like. This is the type A allele, this is the type B allele, and this is the type O allele. Remember this pattern of inheritance is called co-dominance. So type AB, that's going to look like this. If you're type AB, it means you have a type A allele and you have a type B allele. If you're heterozygous, type B, it means you have one type B allele and one type O allele. If this individual was homozygous type B, then both would be the type B. But heterozygous means this person is type B because B is completely dominant over O, but heterozygous means they do have the type O allele in their genotype. So this is our cross. I A, I B, I B, little I. This is kind of a cool cross, I think. So 25% This would be our genotype, and this is type AB blood. 25% homozygous type B, but you can just write type B. 25% heterozygous type A, but you can just write type A. And then we have another 25% type B. So what you would do then, if you were picking a multiple choice question, you would combine these two and that would be 50% type B. Okay, so your final answer would be 25% type AB, 25% type A, and 50% type B. Okay, 25 of those are homozygous and 25 are heterozygous. Okay, also remember that it is a multiple choice test, but you are going to have to have scratch paper to write out your answers. So you're going to have to do these crosses on paper and then choose the correct multiple choice answer. Okay, let's go through number six and seven because these are really important too. 
Number six, imagine that a species of rabbit has two fur colors, black fur allele and a white fur allele. Describe the most likely phenotype of a heterozygous rabbit for each pattern of inheritance. Okay, so what that's meaning is if you, you're looking at the genotype, we're gonna have a big B and we're gonna have a little B, okay? If black is completely dominant over white, that means big B is black and little b is white. Okay, so that means complete dominance, heterozygous individual. That means that the heterozygous individual looks like the dominant allele. So this would be black rabbits. If black is completely dominant over white, a heterozygous individual is going to be black. Incomplete dominance. You have to remember what this one means. If the pattern is incomplete dominance, then the phenotype is an intermediate. So remember, this means intermediate phenotype. It's somewhere between the two. So if we blended black and white to get that intermediate, that would probably be gray. Codominance, that means both alleles are expressed. So a heterozygous individual, if you have a black gene and a white gene, that's going to give you black and white together. So it could be black and white spotted, black and white striped, <laughs> either of those would be a possibility. Okay, the last question. Imagine there's an autosomal disease that affects normal lung function. We're now looking at a heterozygous individual again in both of these questions but it's two different patterns of inheritance. One is autosomal recessive and one is autosomal dominant. So for that, you really have to remember um, what those two patterns mean. Remember in an autosomal recessive, we'll go with L because it's a lung disease. It's just random, you could use any letter. That would mean big L is normal and little L is disorder. So a heterozygous individual, big L, little L, would be a carrier, no disease. Why? Why does he not have the disease? Because the disease is carried on the, the little L, and this individual has a normal functioning protein. They're able to make enough normal protein that they wouldn't have the disease. Because it's autosomal recessive, it means the disease is recessive. Normal is dominant. The next possibility though is the opposite. In an autosomal dominant, that means big L is the disorder and little L is normal. So big L, little L, you have the disease. Okay, because the disease is carried on the big L. So that means a heterozygous individual has the disease, just like in dwarfism, just like in Huntington's disease. If you have any questions about that, be sure to come to my office hours or email me. And if you have questions about any of the mitosis or meiosis, so remember on the study guide, you have all of these other concepts too. And I will tell you that you really need to know what's worse. An error in mitosis or an error in meiosis and why.
And you need to really be able to explain the why. I went through that in last week's lecture discussion. So if you don't remember that, be sure to watch the video because this is a hint. This is most likely your essay question on the test. So make sure you can really thoroughly answer this correctly. Okay, thanks.